everybody and welcome to St Mary's Church. It's lovely to see you all this morning. Wherever you are in the world, you're always welcome here. So now let us sing our first hymn, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you we say together Almighty God, God to whom all hearts are open, open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I just stand if you're at home to say the Gloria with me. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Lord, heavenly King, almighty God, God and Father, Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with, with the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God, God the Father. Amen. So here's the collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth, that we may enjoy eternal life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have our Bible readings. The first reading for Sunday the 12th of September from Isaiah chapter 50. The first reading this morning is one of a number of references in the book of Isaiah to a true servant of God. Such a servant teaches but also listens and is willing to face persecution. Christians have seen this passage as looking forward to the ministry and passion of Jesus. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9a. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard, I did not hide my face from insult or spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for Sunday 12th of September from James chapter 3. In this second reading, James begins by reminding Christian leaders and teachers of their great responsibility. He then reminds us all of the importance of what we say and how we say it. Words can sometimes do a lot of damage. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large, that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts the great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity, it stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, 
can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives, or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days to rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in their return for their life? Those who are, who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning. And first of all, a question for you. If I say the name Jesus, what image immediately springs to mind? I'll give you a few moments. Maybe chat to the person sitting next to you. And, and just maybe say what you think is that first gut reaction to the name Jesus. So is it the Christmas card, the baby in the manger, maybe? Is it Jesus the shepherd? Or is it a very benevolent, saintly Jesus as we see in medieval art? I don't know what your answers are, but Adrian Plass has written a book and it's entitled Jesus, Safe, Tender, Extreme. And in today's gospel reading, we see an example of the extreme side of Jesus. Jesus, in this fast moving Bible passage we've just read, which is typical of Mark's gospel, it moves very quickly. Jesus predicts his death. And it's one of those three times in Mark's gospel that he predicts his death that we've just read today. In addition to this, he tells off Peter for trying to avert his purposes and, and tell him that, no, he shouldn't die. And then Jesus carries on in that passage we've read to tell us about the cost, the true cost of following him, the true cost of discipleship. And it is to take up our cross and follow him. 
They're not easy words to digest. There's no way to dress it up. They're quite stark. And this is the extreme side to Jesus. And it's the cost of discipleship that we're going to look at briefly today. Many music bands from the Rolling Stones to Disney have written songs about life in general not being easy. And we know life is tough. There are indeed glorious moments in life and we need to hang on to those and celebrate those. But it's also mundane, boring, and sometimes life is downright awful. Looking for an easy answer through our faith or a, or a way out through our faith rarely works. And Jesus' words echo this because being a Christian means that we take up our cross and life isn't going to be easy. He puts us under no illusion that it will be fluffy and all wonderful. We need, as, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, to count the cost and to look at the commitment of being a Christian and to take up our responsibilities and take it seriously. It's a choice to commit to Jesus. And the cross is central to our faith because Jesus' death and sacrifice bought us freedom and a relationship with God the Father through Jesus. The central theme of the Christian faith is an emblem of suffering and sacrifice. We may wear a cross around our neck on a piece of jewellery. But it is also the symbol of unconditional love and of victory. The Christian walk is one which will undoubtedly involve some suffering. But it is also the path to victory and eternal life. So how do we follow Jesus? How do we take up our cross? What does it mean? Well, it means to acknowledge Jesus as our saviour, to say sorry for our wrongdoings and begin to walk in relationship with Jesus. And here's the challenge. It's to allow Jesus to transform and to change us day by day as he nudges us to become more like him. We begin to change by building a relationship with Jesus through prayer and worship. Taking up our cross and following Jesus wherever he may lead will be tough and we can't do it alone. And God sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us these nudges in life. He may put someone on our minds to call them to speak to them, to message them, to put a card through their door and ask how they are. It's also the Holy Spirit who will give us these uncomfortable feelings when things are not quite right in our lives and things need to change. And we should bring all of these things to God in prayer, asking for his help. Let's look at an example of transformation, someone who did take up his cross and follow Jesus. It's, it's Peter. And he initially gets things wrong. He tries to silence Jesus and tell him he shouldn't suffer and he shouldn't die. And Jesus is very stern towards Peter and even goes as far to say, get behind me, Satan. Peter goes on to deny that he ever knew Jesus following Jesus's arrest. And yet, if we read in the book of Acts, chapter two, it is Peter who transformed by the Holy Spirit, stands up and openly declares his faith in Jesus to the listening crowds, to the Sanhedrin and to all of the Jewish rulers who are listening. He is unashamed and transformed. And this is the same God who is at work in our lives if we're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Faith links with action, as we can see in Peter's life. Committing to Jesus takes discipline. But as we see, we're not alone. And in addition to the Holy Spirit, we have each other. That's why church is so important and meeting together as a community is so vital 
to our faith walk and our faith journey. We are a community of believers and, and we walk through life together, through life's highs and through life's lows. And we're, we're a family. And as a family, we can support each other, listen to each other, pray for each other, and if possible, offer practical support to each other. We can help our others to carry their cross when it's too heavy for them. And we can help and enable others to follow Jesus. And as well as helping others who are in our community, we should want to draw others to join with us in our community, in our church. One of our, one of our church people, Andrew, spoke a few weeks ago about sharing our faith with another person as part of the ACORN project. And retelling stories to each other means that we can pray for each other and encourage another, each one of us in that. So this week, how are we going to take up our cross and follow Jesus in the workplace, with our family and with our friends? Let me share with you one example, and this is how the ACORN Project works, is that we, we speak to somebody about Jesus in our day-to-day -day life and then share it with others. So I will share it with you. I was in Sainsbury's a few weeks ago, minding my own business, picking up a few bits and pieces, and I was in an aisle with a lady. And she turned to me and she said, excuse me, I'm going to ask you a question are you wearing TCP the antiseptic and I thought no <laughs> and this lady said oh that's okay that's okay she said it's just I can smell TCP and she said my mother has just died and when I feel my mother close to me I can smell TCP the antiseptic because her mum loved this antiseptic and that was that lady's perspective, and that was her belief about her mother who has died. And that led on to me gently being able to share what I believe, what happens when people die. I believe that life goes on after we die, and with our faith in Jesus, we can be with God in heaven because of Jesus. And I was able to share that very gently and very simply and we chatted and we moved on. And I won't ever know, that might be a tiny cog in a wheel to help that lady on her faith journey. And I will never know, but we need to be open to share our stories and to share what we have with our faith with others. Maybe ask God this week to lead you and guide you on how you should be taking up your crosses and committing to Jesus. Is it in deepening your relationship with God? Or is it to share your faith with others and supporting our brothers and sisters in church? We don't do it alone and we can't walk this in our own strength. And Jesus says these words in John's gospel, God the Father will send you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. You know him because he lives with you and will live in you. And that's the Holy Spirit who will be with us today, tonight and tomorrow and forever. The extreme Jesus in our gospel reading is also being tender with us because he knows we're weak and he sends the Holy Spirit to be with us and the support of our church family around us. Jesus is also safe because we know that he will never leave us or forsake us and we can trust him wherever he leads us. So let's commit to follow the safe Jesus, the tender Jesus and the extreme Jesus. Amen. So we turn to our profession of faith. Please join in with me. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, God Father, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So over now to our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please bless us and our world. May we always be aware of your presence with us. Help us to trust you more fully so that we can show your good news to the people around us in all that we say and all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world for its work and witness. We pray for those who are suffering persecution because of their faith. Please relieve their suffering and give them courage and strength to continue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church here in Peterborough and its witness to you. We especially bring before you our church and parish of St Mary's. Strengthen and guide Michael and Kerry and please bless all that we do in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering because of the COVID pandemic. We thank you that the situation in this country has improved and we pray for parts of our world where the disease seems to be out of control, especially where there is extreme poverty, overcrowding, lack of food and clean water and very little medical support. Give wisdom and strength to all who are working to help in these situations. We pray for continuing generosity from individuals and from governments. And we pray for a fairer distribution of vaccines around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering as a result of floods, famine, wildfires or other natural disasters. Please bless all who provide help in such situations. And we pray for all of the charities and other organisations that are finding it more difficult to help because of the income that they have lost during this last year and a half. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please bless and support all who are facing difficulties in their lives because of changes in their work or schooling or family circumstances. Guide them and give them confidence to deal with the problems that they are facing each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who are suffering, from illness or for any other reason and those who mourn the loss of loved ones at this time. And in a few moments of silence, we bring before you those we know personally. Lord, grant to us and to those for whom we pray, wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend the world, ourselves, and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand at home with me to say the peace, if you would? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you at home. If there's anybody there at home with you, then give them a Christian kiss or share the peace with them too. So now we come to the communion part of our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. 
From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life with sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to sup with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, saying, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen. Amen. So we join in with a prayer together. We thank you, gracious Father, for welcoming your children to feast in your kingdom. By your love, unite us, and with your Spirit, send us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Just now over to Sue for one or two notices. Good morning, everybody. You all look absolutely spiffing today. Hope you're all okay. Welcome to you all, wherever you are in the world. Just short notices today, uh, just to say that if you're coming to church, you no longer have to book in. So just turn up. So that's a good step forward. 
and uh, birthdays, bumper set today. A very happy birthday to Joe today. Happy birthday, Joe. Hope you're having a lovely day. And also happy birthday to Myrwin this Friday, the 17th. Happy birthday to Maggie, Saturday the 18th. And happy birthday to Caleb next Sunday. So I hope you all have absolutely brilliant days. That's all from me. Have a good week. See you next week. Thank you, Sue. So we're now going to sing our last hymn this morning, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. Amen.